Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn about how to download and install an Anaconda distribution. So throughout this whole course, we are going to use Python as our main programming language. And for the IDE purpose, we are going to use this Jupyter Notebook. So in this video, we will see that how we can install this Anaconda and as a part of this Anaconda distribution, all those hundreds of package will be by default available after you install. So let's see what is Anaconda. Let's download it first and then install it. So let's go to the anaconda.com. So you can see this is the anaconda.com, the Anaconda website. Here you can just click on what is Anaconda. So you can see that Anaconda is one of the most popular Python based data science platform and it is used by almost 4.5 million people around the globe. 150 plus enterprise are using this thing and it has a pre-built thousands of data science packages are available. So in this course we are going to use lots of Python and data science package available in a Python like NumPy numerical Python library, matplotlib library, scikit-learn machine learning library or lot of other visualization library like a Seaborn library and other neural network based library we are going to use. So rather than installing all those stuff individually, this Anaconda comes with uh, hundreds of different packages. So let's see how we can download and install. So just click on this download. So you can see that Anaconda is available in for all three major operating system, Windows, Mac and a Linux. Installation process for the Linux, Mac and Windows all are quite similar and quite state forward that is very hassle free installations are available and for all these three major operating system windows mac and linux there is a python 3.6 base and a python 2.7 base versions are available even for two different operating system 32 bit and a 64 bit operating system i would recommend you to download this 3.6 base python version based on your operating system just select this 64 bit or a 32 bit for the Mac also select the similar way either you can go with even graphical based installer for the Mac or even command line based installer and for the Linux also we have a three different distributions are available one is for 80 x86 power 8 and another one is a 32 bit installer so depending on the configuration of your operating system Linux Windows or a Mac whether it's a 32 bit or a 64 bit and a python 3.6 version so i am using here windows so i will download this 64 bit graphical installer on my machine so if you just click on it it will just take you to the actual download page and it will download almost 500 mb around the full package installer for the anaconda it is anaconda 3.5 windows x86 64 bit operating system i have already downloaded on my local machine so i am not going to download it again so just download it once if you download it just double click on that particular package and straight away windows installation process and it will install it so i have already installed this anaconda package now next let's go to the command line prompt now if you have already installed this anaconda package you just type this conda whether particular anaconda package is available on your machines or not Okay, so you can see that with an conda command, it has given lot of suggestion. That means anaconda has been installed on my machine. Now as a part of this anaconda distribution, lots of other Python packages are also installed. So among them, we are going to use one of them is a Jupyter notebook. Now what is Jupyter notebook? So let's go to the Jupyter. So Jupyter notebook is one of the web application and throughout this web application as a part of the notebook web application we can write our python programming all those code directly into browser and it will compile and execute and whatever the output comes directly we can observe inside the web browser it just support another 40 different languages also so that is the power of jupyter notebook and in this video we are going to use how to start this jupyter notebook so as we have installed this anaconda just go to the command prompt and just write Jupyter Notebook 
once you type this Jupyter Notebook, it will automatically start this Jupyter Notebook server and it will take you to the particular page like a local host and it will start on the port 8888. Now I am going to create one more video which will explain you in a more generic way how to use this Jupyter Notebook. So let's just create a very simple Jupyter Notebook Python 3 file. I'll just rename it to the test Jupyter Notebook. I already created test here so I'll just make it test123. Okay. Let's just print a very simple command like a hello. Okay, so it has printed hello. That means Python is installed on our machine. Jupyter Notebook is already installed on my machine successfully. Throughout this whole course for all programming assignment and all those programming exercise, we are going to use this Python as a programming environment and a Jupyter Notebook as a ID. So that's all about this video friends. I hope you enjoy listening to this video and see you into next video. Hello friends, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to see about the very basic overview of the Jupyter Notebook. So let's get started with starting Jupyter Notebook server. To start the Jupyter Notebook, first start the console. So if you are on a Windows machine, just press Windows button and search for CMD and it will start the console. Jupyter Notebook. Now keep one thing in mind, whenever you type this command Jupyter Notebook, you are currently in a directory C drive user PC. So inside this directory only it will start this Jupyter Notebook. So whatever Jupyter Notebook and other file folders are available, it will be visible from this path. If you want to start with some other directory, just change the path of that particular directory and start this Jupyter Notebook. Just press enter. Okay, so we have successfully started this Jupyter Notebook. So you can see here the directory through which we have started this Jupyter Notebook C drive user PC. Inside that whatever files and folders are available, it has just listed it here. If you start from some other directory, it will start from there. Now let's create our first very simple Jupyter Notebook. So from the new Python 3. Okay, so it has created a brand new Jupyter Notebook for us. Let's rename it to some meaningful name like my first Jupyter Notebook. So we have successfully created Jupyter Notebook. Now we can just start writing all those Python code inside this cell. So this is called a cell. Let's write a very simple one like a print hello world. Now to execute this thing, we can just press it here which will actually run the selected cell or there is another option also alter enter or a shift enter okay so we have successfully run this first our jupyter cell so there is a two way one you can press it here or you can just type like a shift enter or alt enter now how to save this thing so you just press this control s and it will be saved and there is a periodic saving are also available after every two minutes or some periodic interval it keeps saving your Jupyter Notebook file. From the file menu again you can just press this save and checkpoint and it will save the file. Now let's say we you have created this full Jupyter Notebook and you want to make a exact duplicate copy you can press it here like a make a copy. You want to rename it you can rename it here. Let's say all those Jupyter Notebook you want to download it into some other format. Something like a notebook format or .py. Notebook format is by default it is available. You want to convert it into python.py file or .html file. So you can just straight away use it. So let's say we want to create a new cell. So there is a one button is available here. Insert cell below. So it will create a brand new cell for us. Now if you see this individual cell, there is a two types of cells are available. One is a code type and one is the markdown type. So in case of code type, you can just write like a Python coding or any other programming language coding. Or if you just convert it into markdown cell, it is just a plain text. And if you just execute it with shift enter or alt enter, it is just a very straightforward, simple text. You can just use all those markdown related syntax also so just press hash 
So it is the first level H1 coding it has applied on our text Python coding. So it's a actually it's a markdown. So let's just change it to the markdown. Okay. So we have seen that there is a two types of cell. Let's say we want to delete one cell. So you can just type it here like a cut particular selected cell. You can even do this copy paste. Or you can run it from here. If you want to let's say interrupt particular cell. So let's say some cells are keep running and it's going into some kind of infinite processes. So you can just interrupt it. Let's say in between you want to restart this full kernel so you can just uh, press it here like a restart and run it all again or you want to reconnect it full jupyter notebook let's say if you don't get all those things which i have explained you in this video you can just use this help and there is a lot of help are available markdown related help notebook related help uh, simple python basic function numpy library scipy library uh, all those helps are available that is a uh, one thing here like a keyboard shortcuts are also so corresponding to every action in jupyter notebook find and replace if you want to insert cell what you can do insert cell above below heading all those related shortcuts are available so that's all about the very basic introduction of the jupyter notebook i hope you enjoy listening this video and see you into next video hi everyone so let's discuss about what is numbers and what are the different mat operators are available in a python so throughout this whole section we'll just walk through all the basic functionality available in a python and in the next section we'll see some of the advanced concept available in a python so let's start with a very simple basic numbers and then we'll see what are the mat operation you can perform on the top of this number so if you see numbers then there are mainly two kinds of numbers are available in a python so one is kind of whole number representation which uh, they call it as a integer so like a int and another one is like a decimal number representation which is uh, nothing but a float so let's define one uh, some couple of uh, integer first so let's say you want to represent 32 that is a purely integer based number you can uh, get to know about that what is the type of uh, this particular 32 so for that you can use like a type function and just simply supply this 32 so it will return a integer instead of that you can just supply like 0 so 0 is also integer so let's define another one like a float so float is a representation of the decimal number so let's say you want to represent 4.6 so that is nothing but a float value and let's say you want to get the type of this particular 4.6 so this particular type function will return a float so this way there are mainly two kinds of uh, numbers are available one is integer and a float now we haven't assigned this particular numbers like integer or float to any particular variable so let's just uh, assign it to one particular variable so variable i haven't uh, yet discussed so in the next video we'll discuss about in a detail what this variable is and what are the different types of variables are available in a uh, python so let's just assign a variable we'll create a x and here we are going to assign let's say any numbers let's say 23 and let's say you want to find what is the type of this x so it will return a integer same way you can define like a float like a 4.5 4.6 let's see what is 0 so 0 is like an integer but if you just represent 0 with 0, 0.0 then it will remain float so this is the two basic data type uh, as a numbers are available in a python now let's see what are the operation you can perform on the top of this mat operation. what are the different mat operation you can perform on the top of this uh, numbers so uh, let's say very so simple let's say 3 plus 4 so it will immediately return us the 7 so you can use this python as a like a calculator but it is some what much much more than a calculator let's take another simple one let's say 
2 minus 4.6 so it will immediately return as the float number so whenever you do any kind of population between the integer then it will return the result in an integer provided the results are uh, not in a float number so 3 plus 4 is always a uh, remain an integer but if you consider this second operation in a second operation we have uh, just subtracted one float number from the integer so whenever anything is involved which is a float then the result will be definitely float because uh, if the result is in an integer you will lose the precision you will lose the data so in that case uh, python will just return the float number let's do uh, some sort of multiplication so say we'll multiply by 5 but uh, if you do same thing like 5.0 it will return a 10.0 so now in a first result it has written a 10 which is nothing but an integer but in a second result it has written a 10.0 which is nothing but a float so uh, let's increase the complexity of our uh, operation let's say you want to perform 2 plus 5 minus 10 so there is a multiple uh, operation it will perform and it behaves like a calculator so it has written a minus 3 let's use uh, some so let's use some bracket and uh, we'll add some more complexity to our expression let's say you want to perform some multiplication first And then you want to add 3 to it so 2 into 5 become 10 plus 3 it will become a 13 so as per the board mass rule it will uh, calculate or perform all those kind of operation that uh, first priority will always be a, a division operation then a multiplication then a addition and a subtraction let's do some sort of division let's say 1 divided by 23 so it will return a float number so this is all about uh, addition multiplication division and a subtraction uh, let's do some more operation let's say you want to find the exponent so let's say we want to find the exponent of 5 so we can use the two asterisk symbol or two star symbol and 5 so here 2 will become a base and 5 will become exponent so it will return us 2 multiplied five times so it will it should return as 32 because if you just do it will return as 32 let's say instead of 5 you can just do 5.2 then also it will return as 36.75 let's do another uh, operation let's say you want to find the remainder while uh, dividing some value with some other value so let's say you want to divide 32 by 7 so it has written a float number now if you want to get uh, just the integer part of it you can just simply use double slash so double forward slash and it will just return the integer part so it's you can consider is like an integer division of this 32 divided by 7 now same way for this particular number you want to find what is the remainder left so you can just simply use the module operation so to perform a module operation in a python you can use this uh, particular percentage sign so 32 modulo 7 so it has written a 4 because uh, the 7 multiplied by 4 will become a 28 and 28 uh, subtracted from this uh, 32 so remainder is 4 if you just do 33 you should return a 5 okay so these are all the basic uh, mathematical operation you can perform on top of numbers so let's just summarize what we have learned in this uh, video so we have learned about uh, different kinds of numbers are available in a python and what are the operation you can perform on the top of python like a simple basic arithmetics and different uh, special operation like a uh, exponential operation then we have learned about the integer division and a module operation so that's all about this video see you into next video
Hi everyone. So let's discuss about what is the variables in a Python and what are the other data types are available in a Python. So in the last video we have already seen about the two data types like integer and a float. Now in this video we'll define about what is exactly the variable is, what are the rules are associated with the variable and what you can do with such a kind of variable. So numbers in case of numbers floats and integer we have already seen. Now we'll introduce two more data types types like a string and a boolean so before that let's just uh, uh, see what is variable so variable is you can consider is like a memory storage so if you want to store some particular data or a number or something in some storage location and after that you want to access something uh, then you can access through this particular variable name so you can consider it like a big memory so you can say in a computer we have a good amount of memories are available and every single memory is associated with some sort of address so let's say you want to store some of your data then data you can access through that particular memory location and that particular memory location is like a numbers in a nature but this programming language like python java c c plus plus they will give us the flexibility to the programmer that you can access rather than just that particular memory address you can access with some sort of human like uh, english language like a name so let me just define one simple variable let's say uh, we'll define x is equal to three so here th x is like a variable so x variable is pointing to somewhere in a memory location on our secondary memory storage or a or primary memory storage and the value contained inside that particular memory location is nothing but a tree so if i just execute that means that one memory location in our primary storage allocated and that is been assigned to you can say x so x is nothing but you can consider as like a address where our data tree has been stored now let's say you want to retrieve uh, what is there in that particular memory location so you should have that address of that particular memory location if you don't have a address then you almost got lost the data so that's why whenever you store something you should have a reference that if let's say i am staying at one particular home in this planet earth then i should have some sort of a longitude and latitude associated with my so as per our current convention of uh, this planet earth so if i know about that particular longitude and latitude i can immediately look at my uh, particular current position or any others even house also the way how this uh, mapping and geographic mapping like a google map and a big map kind of system works so you can just correlate uh, this memory and variables like this that the variable is nothing but the address and address in which we are uh, staying like a data is staying inside that particular variable now let's say you want to retrieve what is contained at that particular memory location so instead of writing what is the address of that particular memory location you can just simply write like a x and it will just return what is contained inside the x now let's say you want to find what is the address of that particular memory location so you can use the id function and just supply the x so you can see now this 15144658 is nothing but the memory location where our data x has been okay the value of this uh, tree has been reside so it's like a huge huge amount of address are available in a primary uh, memory so every single memory location has been addressed with some sort of number and at this particular number the data is like a tree so that is what the basic uh, definition of this variable so you can define such a kind of variable you can even assign that particular variable to some other variable so let's say i'll define y and instead of writing any particular uh, data i just want to assign this y with x and later if i just want to retrieve let's say y i can just simply use y and y is also 3 so now both of the memory location it is pointing to now uh, pointing to some particular memory address and 
the value contained inside that particular memory address is nothing but a 3. Now let's just grab what is the value okay what is the memory address of this y so now you can see the memory address of x and memory address of y is exactly similar so how is it possible so every single variable or available inside this R, python programming language it's like a immutable so concept of immutable will come into picture so immutable is nothing but you just cannot change the value inside that particular memory location so when we first define this x is equal to 3 that means at one particular memory location it has been assigned uh, this value is 3 now whenever we try to define the another variable uh, having a same value 3 what this python will do if already 3 has been assigned or written inside the memory it will just point to our another variable y to that same particular memory location rather than creating the new one so that way it is python kind of programming language are highly memory efficient you can say that's why we got the exactly same memory location so whenever you try to change something let's say you want to add a 3 to 5 or 3 plus 5 whatever you want to do this 3 will never be changed inside the primary memory location but uh, whatever the new value will be assigned like a 3 plus 5 will become 8 so it will assign to some other memory location so that is what the basic idea behind the variable now let's just introduce the another two data type so we have seen about the integer and a float now let's see about the string so let's say you want to store instead of number some sort of uh, you can say letters or a set of letters so you can see like let's define another variable let's say z and i just want to store abc or let's say hello so every single uh, character it has to be inside this single quotes inside the this uh, python programming language so now earlier we have defined uh, some numbers to this uh, particular variable x particular variable y now in this case we have assigned this hello as a string you can say and that has been assigned to some particular variable let's say z now let's say you want to retrieve this z so you can just simply use now here also this z is nothing but a memory location you can say or a memory address that where in whole of this our primary memory uh, primary storage where this hello has been reside and that hello it has retrieved based on the memory address now if you see the memory address of this particular variable z it will be completely different from this x because in x location 3 has been uh, written but uh, in that particular uh, location this hello the file later string has been written so this is the another data type we have introduced now let's see on uh, the fourth one let's say you want to cater with just the two value like a boolean value so either it will be a true or it will be a false and you just want to deal with a two level so it will be off or on or it will be here or there so in such a kind of uh, tackling such a kind of situation in a python we have like let's define a w so two value you can assign like a one is a true or you can say let's say a is equal to false so either it will be a true or it will be a false now if we just find what is the type of this w so it's a bull so it's a bull kind of variable if you uh, want to know what is the type of this z so it's a string so to represent any kind of set of letters uh, you can use like a string data type so which is nothing but a type str and if you want to just represent the two level like a true or false or on off or zero or one you can use like a, a boolean kind of data type in a python so it will be either true true or it's these are the like a reserved keyword in a python so you just cannot use haphazardly anywhere now there are a lot of other reserved keyword we'll see all those things into detail in the next few videos like 
for disease and making we have a if or uh, you can say loop looping for we have a for loop or we have a let's say while loop so let's say you want to define some variable just, just now just now we have defined this x so x is like a tree now if i try to do like a if is equal to let's say 4 so it will immediately give me the error that it's an invalid syntax why it is invalid syntax because there are a lot of reserved keyword are available in a python and you just cannot use those reserved keyword as a variable name now let, so this is the first uh, rule we have learned about it how to define the variable name so there are some other rules are also there to define the variable so let's see couple of rules let's say i'll define like a one variable let's say one two three str and i'll just assign it to the hello so this is the variable i'm trying to define let's see what happens so again it has given us the error because the main rule for uh, defining any kind of variable is uh, that your variable name cannot start with any kind of digit now if you just do one two three instead of one two three star you can just use like a str one two three and you can just simply assign this hello now it just simply works let's say you want to grab this one str one two three so it has written as hello so this is another rule that uh, your variable name cannot start with any kind of digit it has to be started with some sort of uppercase or a lowercase letter only so we have learned about two rules that you just cannot use this uh, reserved keyword as a variable and you can uh, your variable name cannot start with any kind of digit it has to be start with some sort of letters only and you can use only letters uh, any kind of digit or underscore let's say you try to define like a str underscore one two three as a hello so underscore you can happily use it but let's say you want to put dollar so it will immediately give us the error like a invalid syntax so there are three kinds of things are perfectly allowed while defining any kind of variable so one is any kind of digit but digit cannot start with the or a starting point of the any kind of variable name you can use any kind of letter like uppercase or lowercase and you can happily use the underscore apart from that there is no other character you can use to define or any kind of variable inside this python programming language let's see another rule let's say i'll define one variable like a total let's say total is equal to 3 and i'll define another total is equal to 5 so do you think that both are the same variable or both are the different variable now let's say i will try to print this uh, total having uh, all the small cases so it says it has written a 3 and if i try to print you can say total a capitalized uh, letter of this uh, total which is nothing but uh, phi so that means python treat uh, this both the total as a different variable because the uh, python programming language are like a case sensitive so this total is completely different from this particular total so while defining a variable if you have a let's say one particular character uh, even if the same strings are there one particular character is uppercase and in another thing at the same place if one particular even if the one particular character is a lowercase it will treat it completely different so this is the another rule to define the variable that both this variable python programming language will treat it completely different because for human this total and this total will remain same but uh, for the python it will be completely different thing your variable name can start with uh, even underscore also so you can start with let's say underscore str and let's just assign hello so 
starting point can be either any kind of letters or it can be any kind of underscore also but it cannot start with any kind of digit okay so let's just summarize what we have learned throughout this uh, whole video so we have introduced two more data types in a python like string and a boolean uh, we have seen about uh, how to do the assignment operation in a python and we have assigned the value of one variable to the another variable we have seen how to get the memory location where your actual data has been recite and all the data types in a python or data contained in the python are variables are immutable so you just cannot change the value of that particular variable then we have seen about the string data type and a boolean data type and learn about lot of rules while defining the variable name in a python so that is all about the basic idea about uh, what this variable is in a python and four data type we have learned there are some more data types uh, we subsequently will see in a future video like a list uh, dictionary set tuple so that's all about this video i hope you enjoy listening this video and see you in the next video hi everyone so let's discuss about what is the dynamic typing in a python so if you are from a programming language background like a c c++ or a java you might have observed that let's say you define one variable let's define x is equal to let's say 45 so 45 is in this case an uh, integer so if you define such a kind of uh, 45 to one particular variable x and that is an integer and after that let's say you want trying to define let's say string to the hello the other programming language like a c c++ or java they will immediately throw us error that x is already been defined which is nothing but the integer so now as uh, x is integer you just cannot assign any other data type to this particular x throughout the lifetime execution of your program so that is called uh, as a static typing that uh, you just cannot change the data type of that particular variable but in case of uh, python you can just immediately change the data type of that particular variable so let's say i have defined x is equal to 45 and let's just find what is the type of this x so x is called as an integer now again i am trying to define x is equal to let's say hello so that is nothing but the x is equal to uh, type is string and after that if i try to find what is the type of x it will give us string so that means it's a dynamically type programming language this python is so because in a runtime of your execution of your program at the runtime you can change the type of particular variable in a python programming language so in this case we have made from integer to string let's define x is equal to let's say true and let's just find what is the type of x so x is now a boolean that means in a runtime environment you can change the type of particular variable in a python so that is why the python is called the dynamic typing programming language whereas other programming language like a c c++ or java that is hardly tightly coupled with uh, every single variable is tightly coupled with some particular data type in a throughout the execution of that program so that is why those programming language are like a statically type programming language whereas the python is a dynamic typing programming language so that's all about this video see you into next video hi everyone so let's discuss about the string so we have already seen how to define a string with the single quotes so let's first define one string and then we'll see about the what are the operation you can perform and what are the functions are available specifically string related function inside this python so let's define a simple string like say x is equal to hello now you can define this string in a single quotes or you can define the same string instead of single quotes both the side you can put the double quotes so happily you can use both of this way to define a string like either in a single quotes or in a 
double quotes so just make sure that uh, for the re readability of your code perspective you stick to one particular notation so either a single quotes or a double quotes uh, let's just stick with a single quotes now let's see what we can do or what per operation we can perform on the top of this particular string let's say we want to capitalize so we have one capitalized method is there. So you can see now H become a capitalized. So it has converted this uh, hello string into capitalized. Let's say we want to find the uppercase version of this particular string. So every single letter become a uppercase. Now let's say you want to make it a lowercase. Now in this case it doesn't make sense because uh, the string is already lowercase but even if any of the single letter inside this particular string if it is a uppercase it will convert it into lowercase. Okay so so far so good very simple function. Now let's say we want to see how many total characters are there inside the string. So we can use the length function so length len and we can just simply supply the variable x so there are total five characters so h e double l o so one two three four five now let's just print this particular string so for printing we can use the simple print function and it will happily print it so so far in this uh, example we have just a single word in a string let's add x is equal to let's say hello space y so now we have a total two words inside the string and if we just apply this length function there are total 11 characters are there inside this particular string and let's say if you want just print this newly created x it will print this hello space world now let's say we want to print this hello at a first line and a world in a second line so how we can do it so for that we need to define like a escape character that instead of space we want a new line so i'm just going to append slash n so now this n it won't consider as a later n but instead of that before that we have kept like a one backward slash so it indicates that do not consider n as a later n of a english alphabet like a to z instead of that consider this uh, slash n is like a new line so i'm just going to create another string and now let's just find the length of x so still it's 11 because slash n is considered as a one letter and now if i try to print this particular x you can see now hello is come into first line and a world is into second line because after hello this slash n indicates the special character and that special due to that special character this world has been printed into second line now let's say you have a two string so we have already defined one string let's say one So one is let's say hello and another one is like world and you want to find you want to concatenate both of the string so you can just simply use like x plus y so it will just concatenate hello with the world so there is no space uh, if you want to keep the space we can just simply use another string in between and I'm just giving one space so hello then this space it has concatenated with a hello and after that y variable it has printed which is nothing but y you can do kind of arithmetic also so let's say hello you want to print it three times so we can just use three times x so hello 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 become three times you can apply like hello three times and four times you want to print a y 
so hello 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 three times and a while it has printed a uh, four times now let's see we want to find a uh, one particular character inside this string so there are total five characters that are there inside this x so let me just print x first and there are total five characters so the first character is h then e then l l and o now let's say we want to grab the very first character so every single character has been indexed with one number and which is sequentially starting from zero so if you want to extract a very first character inside this thing you can use the index notation like a zero so zero is uh, pointing to h one is pointing to h, e two is pointing to l 3 is also pointing to l and 4 is pointing to 0 now how we can grab so we can use the bracket notation so after x which is nothing but the variable string variable inside that we can just simply pass like a 0 so it will just return the zeroth character you can see the first character but the index with the number 0 let's say you want to grab the second one so second is nothing but is not a e but it will be l because zero is h one is e two is l so this is about the single character fighting let's say you want to grab the list of character let's say h and e you want to grab it so you can use the colon notation so inside the bracket you can separate the starting index and ending index so before colon you can write a start index and after that you can write a end index so we want to grab h and e that means the indexing is starting from 0 and it will end to this 0 and 1 so from 0 and 1 we want to extract so we need to write one more index incremented by that particular later we want to extract because this upper bound is always excluded so it has written h e now just think over let's say you want to grab both this l and n how will you do it so just pause this video for a second and think about it that which particular index you will uh, take it so l has, first l has been indexed with the number 2 and then 3 but we need to go up to 4 so it will just return all the letter from 2 3 and 4 has been excluded because this upper bound is always excluded uh, in such a kind of notation in a python so it has written ll so this is all about the positive indexing because indexing is starting from 0 1 2 3 and a 4 let's say you want to start with the negative indexing so negative indexing is starting from Minus one, then minus two. So it is starting in a reverse order. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five. So let's say you want to grab the last character. You can just simply use minus one. So O will become a last character, and you can even grab it through. Let's say this is the fourth. Uh, in O has been indexed with the number four. so this is the positive index way you can grab this o and this is a negative index way you can grab this o so we have learned a lot of functions and functionality related to this uh, string object available in a python we have created this uh, string we have seen what are the operation you can perform on the top of string like how to capitalize the particular string or how to lower case the string how to print the screen how you can put the escape character inside the string how to concatenate string and you can do all this kind of arithmetic like multiple times you same string you want to repeat it and how to extract one particular character or you can say later from the string or how to extract the set of character which is sequential uh, inside the string with the help of such a kind of bracket and a slicing notation so this is the this is called as a slicing because you are slicing the part of the string and you are trying to extract with the help of such a kind of a start index and a end index so that is all about the string i hope you enjoy listening this video and see you in the next video hi everyone 
let's discuss about a boolean variable and a conditional logic so we have already gone through how to define a boolean variable but before that let's try to evaluate some sort of mathematical condition and how it is related to boolean variable and how we can use such a kind of boolean variable to make some condition true and false to take some decision or else we'll take some other decision so let's uh, approach this problem of uh, making condition inside this python programming language step by step so let's say we have a two number three and seven and we want to find whether three is greater than seven or not so mathematically we know that it's three is not greater than seven so ideally it should return a false so that is nothing but the boolean variable so this way there are a lot of other conditional operators are there so instead of less greater than we can put like less than and it will return a true that means 3 is less than 7 now instead of comparing uh, this manner we can define one variable let's say x is equal to let's say 5 and we want to find whether x is greater than 6 or not so now it will just paste this 5 here and 5 is greater than 6 that means it is a false we can even use the comparison logic x is equal to 6 so it's a false x is equal to 5 so it's a true so this double equal to indicates that we are comparing the equal value so whether x is equal to 5 or not so whenever the x is equal to 5 it will just return a true we can even simply use like x is less than 6 so it's a true we can use the multiple things like less than or even equal to so x is less than or equal to 6 so it's a true either it will be 6 or it will be less than 6 in that case it will return a true so this way condition will be evaluated apart from that there are number of other operators are available like ending or operation or oring operation like boolean operation you can perform so let's say you want to find the oring between 2 and 0 so it will return a true because this true oring with this false will return a same way you can use like condition like or or you can use the condition like and so and will become a zero so either you can use this such a kind of less than greater than less than or equal to greater than or equal to ending or in negation operation you can perform on the top of such a kind of variable and once we perform such a kind of operation which is a conditional operator you can see after that the result it will give like a boolean variable and that is what the output is either true or a false now how we can use this to create a conditional logic inside this programming part so let's say we have already defined let's say x x is equal to 5 so let's take a very simple one let's say if x is greater than 5 or let's say x is greater than 3 we want to print x is greater than 3 otherwise we'll print like a x is less than 3 so for that we can just simply use like a if condition and we can just simply compare x is greater than 3 then a colon and we'll just simply print x is greater than 3 else again semicolon then I'll just repeat this print statement so instead of greater I'll just put it like a less so now what it will do along with this if it will try to evaluate this particular condition so currently we have x is equal to 5 so 5 is greater than 3 which indicates that this condition will be evaluated to be true and if this particular condition is uh, true that means the part of the code where whatever we have written inside this if block will be executed 
so currently we have x is greater than 3 it is written here else if the x is uh, this particular condition it's evaluated to be false in that case it will just simply print this x is less than 3 so let me just execute so x is greater than 3 let's make a x is equal to 1 and let's just evaluate again so now 1 is greater than 3 that means this particular condition has been false so control mod go inside this if block you can consider this much part is like a if block and this much part is a else block so inside the if block and else block you can put a lot of amount of your business logic that what you want to perform based on uh, the truthiness of this particular condition if this particular part of condition is able to be true perform this action otherwise perform this action so now as we have defined this x is equal to 1 that means this part will be evaluated to be false if this part is evaluated to, to be false then in that case just forget about this part and control will immediately go inside this else block so inside the else block it is a written the condition like a x is less than 3 so let's just print it so now based on the conditional logic of less than or greater than you can put like a less than or is equal to or ending or in operation or even such a kind of complex uh, logical stuff you can just put inside this uh, part and you can just evaluate that condition to be either true or a false if it is a true the control will go here otherwise this control will go here so that is what the basic idea behind the conditional logic you can even simply use like a multiple if and else statement so inside the if again you can put like a if and else statement inside the else also you can put like a if and else statement so that is what about the basic idea about the boolean variable and how to use those boolean variable output or you can say boolean variable uh, evaluation with the help of such a kind of conditional operator and how to put that into conditional logic so that's all about this video see you into next video hi everyone let's discuss about the looping so in this video we'll see about what are the different looping mechanisms are available why looping is required in a, any of the programming language so if you are from other programming background like a C, C++ or a Java you might have heard about the looping and what is the advantage of using looping how to use those looping and what are the mechanisms are available inside the uh, for the looping mechanism in any of the programming language now in this video we'll see from the python programming perspective that what is looping so let's take uh, one use case let's say we want to print the number from 1 to let's say 5 so i can just simply use like a print one and afterwards i can write like print 2 then a print 3 print 4 and print 5 and if i just execute it it will print me the all the numbers from 1 to 5 but then you can see there are lots of repetitive works are here now instead of one let's say i want to write like a hello hello so every time i need to write the print statement and i need to execute it but to print just the five number it still looks uh, okay that uh, you can just write all those five statement and you can just execute and you will get the executed output but let's say if i tell you to print let's say thousand number from one to thousand or you, i'll tell you to print let's say hello thousand times so this is like a very repetitive kind of work and you just cannot write uh, thousands of even hundreds of tens of thousands of line at that time so for avoid such a huge huge amount of code writing we have a looping mechanisms are available in a python so how this looping will work so mostly in a python there are two types of looping mechanisms are available so one is a for and another one is a while so let's say you have any kind of iterable object so we have already learned about list or dictionary we have learned about the string and 
and in one of the video we have seen about the range function also okay so these are the some of the iterable objects so for all those kind of object you can just iterate over with the help of this uh, for loop and you can go through each individual element of this particular uh, element of this particular iterable object either it is list dictionary string or range and you can execute all those instruction in the body of this particular for loop so let's take an example of let's say one string so i'm just going to define one string let's say temp and i'm just creating hello now let's say i want to print each and every character in a new line of this particular string so one thing i can do like print temp zero then print temp one then print temp two so it will print h e l l o so five different statement i need to write so let's uh, see how this for loop will work and it will avoid writing this huge huge amount of code for us so i'm going to use this for then we'll take one temporary variable so let's say we'll take temporary variable like a t in and what particular iterable object on which you want to perform those looping mechanism so let's say i want to loop over this particular variable temp which is of type string so temp and then colon so now for each element or each character or you can say any of the each item available in this particular iterable object now in this case our iterable object is string it will loop over true and it will go inside the body so body will be indented at a one one level indentation you need to write i am just going to write like a t so now t the first time this loop will iterate the t will become h and then the next time it will be e then the t will become l then again t will become l and at the end the last t will become o so in this way it will loop uh, iterate over each and every character of this particular string and it will enter to the body of the string and it will just execute it so let me just execute this part so now you can see instead of writing five different lines of code with the help of this for loop mechanism we have just written a two lines of code and we have printed like h e l l o same thing uh, we can replicate for this particular our example so instead of using string we can use the range function so range let's say i want to print from 1 to 5 so i'll just go from 1 to 5 this 6 has been in excluded here also the same thing we'll take so one is the temporary variable we'll take let's say item in and after in you need to write what is the iterable object so the iterable object is range and then colon and at the next line uh, the body of this particular for loop will start so i'm just going to print item so now you can see we have easily uh, printed this all those five character one to five with the help of this two lines of code in a for loop let's say instead of six i want to print let's say 100 so immediately it has written me 100 number so we did just as two lines of code we have achieved this functionality let's say from 1 to 10 but in an increment of 2 instead of increment of 1 we want to increment it by 2 so 1 3 5 7 9 so this way it is iterable object will work let's take example of one list so let's say list i'm going to create one list so let's say first object is 1 then a 34 let's say 2.5 let's keep one string like a uh, hello and let's keep one with boolean variable like a uh, true so we have defined one string uh, it's not a string it's a list so let's just iterate over each individual element available inside the list so we'll take a temporary variable like an item in this 
LST variable. And print this item. So now you can see in each individual line it has printed individual element of this particular list. So that is how this for loop mechanism will work. So apart from for loop there is another mechanism like a while loop is also available. Now let's discuss about the while loop and how this while loop is different from the for loop. So if you have observed one thing in a for loop that uh, after every uh, iteration in a for loop it is incremented by one. Somewhere here, if with the help of this range function, it has been incremented by two. But uh, we don't have uh, enough control while iterating on individual element of this particular item, or we cannot give immediately some sort of any kind of condition. So let's say I'm going to define one variable. Let's say i is equal to let's say zero, and afterwards I'm just going to use this while loop to print the same one to 10. So after while loop, I just want to put one condition. Let's say i is less than, let's say 10. So as long as this condition got satisfied and it got true, it will enter inside the loop. If this got, this condition got uh, dissatisfied or it will return a false in a nature, it won't enter into loop. So let's say first, uh, at a very first iteration, we have i is equal to 0. So 0 is less than 10. That means uh, the condition got satisfied and we'll just print i because it, that's all our temporary wave. Now let's say if I try to execute it immediately our uh, python compiler or any uh, other uh, thing might crash this either Jupyter notebook or our id might crash because if you see here after every iteration this i is not incremented by anything because in a for loop uh, this i or any temporary variable was incremented every time but in this case it is not incremented by any value so it will keep running this loop and keep printing this number and compiler might got crash so after this uh, printing this uh, i will just print like uh, i is equal to i plus 1 so what happens there after first iteration this i value will be incremented by 1 so now it becomes 1 so 1 is less than 10 again it will enter so till i is less than 10 or as long as i is less than 10 it will enter into loop so whenever i will become 10 it won't enter into loop and it will exit from the loop so let's just print it so now it has returned or printed 10 different numbers from 0 to 9 Let's say I want to print 10 also. I'll just uh, increase the condition and 0 to 10. Now i has been incremented by let's say 1. Let's increment by let's say 3. So this way with the help of this temporary variable we have a um, conditions uh, are available like we can put such a kind of condition we can increment this counter by any value or any other way also you can create such a kind of counter so in a while loop compared to for loop you have such a kind of flexibility to increment your counter okay so this is all about the looping mechanism available in a python let's just summarize what we have learned so instead of writing this bulky and huge amount of code like this way this looping mechanism in any programming language especially in python it is giving us the flexibility to write a very small piece of code and execute the same instruction again and again so either you uh, print the same set of instruction uh, without any variable or you can use such a kind of temporary variable to execute your task for each and every individual element is available inside this iterable object and for that we have used this for loop mechanism and apart from for loop there is another mechanism like a while loop is also available so while loop will give somewhat more flexibility for a condition satisfaction plus incrementing your counter so while iterating on individual element of this particular loop so that is all about the looping mechanism in a, available in a python see you into next video hi everyone let's discuss about uh, one of the very important data type available in a python which is nothing but the list 
so we have already seen how to create a variable so let's create some a couple of variable and then we'll try to understand that how it is related to list and what are the problem this list will solve so let's say I have one variable like a first and I am keeping it like a hello where I'm just keep world and third let's say would be so what I have done here I have created a three different variables and for all three different variables given a three different name now let's say instead of just three you might have sometime the situation occur and you want to encounter a thousands of different variable or your hundreds of different variable so in that case how will you define the name for each and every such a kind of variable so in that case you need to group it into one single variable so list is the solution for it that if you want to group the number of item into one single variable it's like a one kind of collections are available in a python so if you have already familiar with the other programming language like a C, C++ or Java, you might have heard about arrays. So arrays is like a ordered list of values. So instead of pointing and giving individual name to all individual element, you group those things into one single variable and that is nothing but a list in a Python. So let's create a very simple list and then we'll club this uh, first, second and third into a single list so let's just create so to create the list we have to use this bracket notation and inside the bracket notation all the value you want to supply it should be a comma separated so let's give the first one let's say a let's give b let's give c so this is called as a list so instead of creating three different variable, I have just put all these three variable into this bracket notation and all those elements are comma separated. Now let's say I want to find the type of this. So it's called as list. Now let's put all these three variable into one single list. first one is a hello and then world then odemi and let me just assign it to one variable let's say my list okay so we have successfully created a list which is having a three different objects so if we just print this my list it will return all these three variable now we have kept this variable like a only string inside this list but instead of a string you can put like a any kind of integer numbers decimal value or any kind of boolean value also possible so let's just give hello and then We can give it boolean value like a true or any kind of number or any decimal digit so this is also possible in a python so in a list you can put non-homogeneous kind of any number of element inside the one particular variable and every single variable you can reference with the indexing so we have created this particular my list. Let me just assign this to my list. We want to find how many total number of elements are there inside the list. So we can use len function and you can just simply supply this my list. So there are total four elements. So one is hello, another one is true, the third one is 45 and fourth one is 
so this is like a you already know about the variable value and there is a one way of creating a list apart from that there is another way also the help of range function so let's say you want to generate a sequence of number and all those sequence of number are incremented either by one two or any particular value so in that case you can use this range function and you can create the list so let's create a range let's say i want to generate uh, numbers from 0 to 10 and i'll just wrap it to the list function okay so it will generate 0 to 10 number so 10 has been always excluded and all those numbers are incremented by one so this is also another way to create a list let's say all those numbers we want to increment it by let's say instead of one two so from zero to four, four six and eight okay so so far so good we have created simple list uh, which is having a non-homogeneous uh, different kind of data types are uh, available so we have a my list now let's say we want to grab individual element of this particular list let's say this second element true so individual element is like a arrays in other language only so the first element is reference with the index 0 then a 1 then a 2 and then a 3 so let's say we want to grab this through so we can simply use this my list then a bracket notation and 1 so 1 is pointing to this particular true so it has written true let's say we want to grab this 23.78 so instead of one we can use this third so third element you can you this is the fourth element uh, in a order wise but uh, index number with which you can uh, simply access this particular element is 23.78 is with the help of number three so my list three will give 23.78 let's say you want to find a sequence of element from true to all the element you want to grab it so you can use like a slice notation so from one colon and onwards all the element so it will return true 45 and 23 instead of one let's say you give the two so from two to onwards all the element will be return so only 45 and 23.78 it has returned so this is about the positive index so we have already seen about the negative indexing in a string video so from the left to right you can reference individual element let me just bring this my list from 0 1 2 and 3 same way you can use the negative indexing so the last element has been reference with the minus one then uh, this one is minus two minus three and minus four so let's just find the last element so last element will be minus one so you can if you want to access this last element you can use this minus one indexing so this is called as a negative indexing uh, with respect to this uh, list data structure there is another way also you can grab this 23.78 so you can grab it like in case of positive indexing this is a third so three also it will return there is another way let's say you have a huge list and you don't know how many total number of elements are available so you can just simply use this length function of my list minus one this particular part will return a four so four minus one will become a three and three will eventually pointing to this particular last element so this is like a very generic uh, notation to access the last element inside the list my list minus one because uh, minus one is indicating to the last element of this particular list so this will also return same now let's say we want to find whether some particular element are available inside the list 
So let's say 45 is available inside the list, but uh, there is a huge big uh, numbers of elements are available inside the list and we want to check whether this 45 is uh, contained inside the list or not. So we can simply use 45 in my list and it will return a true. That means 45 is available. So instead of 45, let's say I'll just put 23. So it will return a false because 23 is not available inside the list. You can use like hello, whether hello contain inside the my list. So it's a true. That means hello is available inside the my list variable. Now we have already created a list, but we haven't done any kind of modification. So let's say you want to add some more value, more element to this particular list. You want to append uh, some particular element to the list. So you can simply use my list dot append. And let's say I want to append world and let's just print this my list so now earlier we have a four element so one element has been added and that is nothing but the end of the list it has added this world now instead of uh, passing just one single element you can use list again so earlier we have just passed this one single element now let's say i want to pass uh, another list to this existing list so i can just use like oh, so this is another list so i am just appending this particular list to my original list hello true 45 23.78 and world okay let's just print it so now you can see it has a total one element has been added so this is not a fourth four element but this is like a another list so it contains list within a list so this is a zero indexing one two three four and fifth so let's say you will try to do like a five so it will return not just two but it will return the fifth uh, indexing number where it is actually pointing to the whole list not just the one single number two so it has returned this two four five false full list so this is the example of list within a list because you can put uh, any number of list within a list also now we have inserted or appended one particular element or list at the end of our original list now let's say we want to put some element inside the list at one particular position so let's say between true and 45 i want to keep one more element so let's say if my list insert so first we'll give the indexing position where we want to put it so after true and before 45 i want to keep one element so i am just giving because this is where the indexing position is 2 so 0 1 2 so after 1 after true it will become a 2 and then whatever the element name we want to put it so let's say Udemy I want to put it and let's just print it so now hello true and Udemy and then 45 so earlier is a, it was a true and 45 now it's a Udemy and 45 and rest of the all element inside this my list variable will remain as it is. Now let's say you want to remove all element inside the list. You can just simply use remove function on the top of this my list variable. So I'm not going to execute it otherwise it will remove all the element inside the list. Now let's say you want to grab the last element. You want to pop the last element you can just simply use pop method and it will return the 
last element because the last element is again it's another kind of list so that's why it has written the full list values so 2 4 5 and 5 now let's say you want to remove some particular element inside the list so let's say i want to remove this particular world so i can use the same method like a remove but instead of not passing anything i'll just pass like a void so in that case it will just remove this particular element whatever we'll pass as a input argument to this remove function and let's just print it okay so you can see earlier we have popped this particular element 245 false so those part has been removed and then we apply this remove method to remove this particular void so now this many element only remains so hello true udemy 45 and 23.78 so we have seen how to grab uh, some particular element inside the list uh, and if you know about the indexing of that indexing number of that particular element like uh, this is indexing with 0 1 2 in that case you can retrieve that particular element now let's see reverse way so let's say you want uh, you already know about the element value so how can you get uh, what is the index uh, position that particular element resides inside uh, with respect to that particular uh, list so let's say i want to know where this true reside so i can just simply use this index matter and i'll just pass the true so wherever the first true will occur inside this uh, my list uh, variable it will return so this is at a first index location let's say 45 so 45 is occurring at a 0 1 2 and 3 so it should return a 3 okay now in our my list uh, there is no single element is been repeating uh, multiple times so i am just adding this my list dot append 45 so now 45 is occurring two times now let's say i want to find how many number of times each and every particular element is occurring so all the element occurs one time but this 45 is occurring two times so how we can get those information inside the list so i can use the count method and i'll just pass the 45 so 45 is occurring two times so this count method will give us the return that how many number of times this particular argument you will pass to this count function will occur let's say true so true is occurring just one times same way hello hello also occurs one time now let's say we want to reverse this particular list so currently the list is starting from hello and the end of the element is 45 but now we want this first element to be 45 and the last element to be hello so we can use like a reverse method okay and let's just print it so completely all the element has been reversed so first element will become 45 and then 23 45 odimi then true and the hello become the last one who is earlier in my list it was a first one you can do all those kind of sorting operation also in on the top of this particular list so i can just use like my list dot sort so currently this sort doesn't make sense here because uh, we have a mixture of element but let's see what it will give so you can see there is a mixture of element that's why it has given a type error so instead of this my list let's create another list 
like okay and let's just apply sort And let's just print this LST. So now you can see the values has been completely sorted. So starting from the lowest value 2, 4, 5, 23, 34, and 63. Okay, so that's all about the list. Uh, let's just summarize what we have learned about the list data type and one of the very important data type available in a Python. So list you can consider as like a non-homogeneous type of multiple elements you can put and reference it with a very single variable so we have put like a number of string boolean values and a decimal digit we have seen a lot of matters what we can apply on the top of list and we have seen how to access individual element or a list of element with the help of this slicing and a bracket notation we have seen how to open some particular element to this particular list how to remove element how to insert element at one particular location how to remove it at which particular index this particular element occurs how many count of individual elements so we have seen about the hell lot of uh, different methods available inside the, on the top of which we can apply on the top of this particular list so that's all about the list i hope you enjoy listening this video and see you in the next video hi everyone let's discuss about the list comprehension so in the last video we have already gone through what is list and what are the operation you can perform on the top of list so list comprehension is like a another way and a very concise way of creating list so let's create one list so generate a list which is having a let's say 10 number and all those numbers are the square of first 10 numbers so we want to generate list like a 1 4 9 up to let's say 100 so to create such a kind of list first we need to create a one empty list so i am just going to create this squares one empty list and after that we'll just create uh, one for loop say i so we'll iterate from 1 to 10 and our temporary variable in this case will become i for every single iteration we'll write like a squares dot append now instead of just appending i i'm going to append i into i okay so it will append 1 into 1 first then a 2 into 2 then a 3 into 3 up to 10 into 10 so let's say what is the uh, element contained inside the square so it is the first 10 number square it has return us so this is uh, creating list uh, without using any kind of comprehension now we'll see how to use such a kind of comprehension so so i have created one variable like a squares with comprehension i'm going to create one empty uh, brackets till now I haven't kept anything and inside the brackets only will keep this for loop so let's say for i in array so this is exactly similar uh, statement what we have written here but now instead of writing body somewhere else I'm just going to write here so first uh, value will be like a evolution of expression like a body of our for loop and afterwards you just write a for loop condition and an incrementing counter now let's see what happens so 
so you can see now exit similar result here it has generated so now instead of writing this two lines of code with this uh, help of this uh, list comprehension we have written just the one single line of code and generated exact uh, same list uh, so now you can uh, see that the first you need to write the value uh, expression you want to evaluate and you want to put it inside the, uh, this particular list and afterwards you can write the straight away same our for or while loop which uh, uses this uh, temporary variable plus the counter so this way with very concise amount of code and very minimal uh, amount of code you can create the list and that is what nothing but the list comprehension so I i'll put some exercise for you to understand the concept and practice little bit more to get a feeling and idea behind the uh, syntax associated with such a kind of list comprehension while creating list with the help of very concise manner so that's all about this video see you into next video hi everyone welcome back so in this video we'll learn about another important data type available in a python which is nothing but a dictionary so in the last video we have already seen about the list let's first create a simple list and let's try to find what is the limitation of that particular list so i am we have already created this my list so it has a number of elements are available like uh, 23.78 10 2 times 45 odme through and hello but if you see here this information are not structured in a manner so let's say i want to keep i'm just creating another list person so all the person related information i want to keep it so let's say name is john so i'll keep it first the second one is let's say age 23 the standard in which uh, this john is studying or what is the education background of john so let's say he has done a ms and what is the weight of this particular person so let's say 100 lbs okay so we have created one list where we kept all person related information so the first one is a john then uh, john means it's a name then a age and then education background and then last one is a weight but we don't know what is the information available in which particular position inside this particular list because uh, this is in our mind that uh, we have defined the first one is like a name and then an age but let's say you want to put such a kind of structured information in a beautiful manner how will you do it so let's just uh, concentrate on first two element and let's create a naming indexing so earlier we have indexing like a zero and a one so the first element which is indexed with the number zero which is pointing to this particular john and then the second element which is indexing with a number one and it is pointing to this age 23 now instead of this indexing 0 and 1 let's say we want to put the data in a key value pair format like a name is equal to john and age is equal to 23 so we can use like a curly braces all the element will be comma separated so the first element like a name then a colon then john the second element is h and i'll keep it 23 so this you can consider it as like a dictionary in a python if we just grab the type it will return a dict type so that is a dictionary type object so let's create a one dictionary object out of it so i'm just giving the person name okay and it's a person so now person has a age 23 and a name john so earlier we were accessing each individual 
element with uh, indexing number 0 1 2 and 3 now let's say we want to grab the name of this particular person I can simply use this bracket notation and inside the bracket notation I can give like a name so name is John same way I can give like a age so it's a 23 now let's say I will give some thing like a weight so weight we haven't defined yet inside this particular dictionary object so it has immediately return as the key error that this particular key doesn't exist and in the terminology of this dictionary this age and a name is like a key so if as this key weight is doesn't exist inside this particular dictionary that's why it has written a key error so age and name is a key and this 23 and a john is like a value inside the list uh, inside the dictionary now let's say we want to print uh, all those values so we can just simply use like a for loop so i haven't covered yet the looping mechanism but uh, in a future video we'll see about uh, looping so for let's say i'll put temporary variable val in and this dictionary object person dot values so this person dot values is like a iterable object and i am iterating over all the values like a 23 and a john and i'll keep this two particular value 23 and john each at each iteration inside this particular uh, local variable i have created you can say inside this uh, val and let's just print this well so now it has written 23 and a john you can use like a keys also so it will return a key like a name and age now once you have a keys you can just simply use like a person well so well is here nothing but the key age and john and all those things we have applied to this person uh, dictionary object so person age 23 person name john instead of iterating you can just simply use like a person dot keys so it will return a name and age same way person dot values so in both of the case it has written a two different kinds of objects so one is a dict underscore keys and in case of values it has written dict underscore values so values is john and 23 keys are name and age now instead of just keys and values you can use the another method like items so let's iterate over this item so person dot items so now it has written a full flag name is equal to john and age is equal to 23 you can even iterate over so now 4 so earlier we got just the keys or either values but now in uh, this looping mechanism we have got keys and value both so it's like a tuple format so those things we'll see in the next video what is tuple and what is set inside this python so for key and well in this person items let's just print this key and then well so now name is john and age is equal to 20 so we have seen in a three ways you can iterate over individual keys and a values and keys way one is a values way and another one is a like a item way so once you put this item it will return a tuple now let's say we want to find whether this particular uh, person dictionary has some particular keys or not so we already know that uh, it has a name and age let's say we want to see whether height is one per one keys uh, name height is key available inside this person dictionary object or not so height in person so it is false that means height name 
and no particular key having a name height is available inside the version but instead of that if you just keep like a name so name is true that means a key name is available inside this person object same way uh, you can do the comparison with the values also so let's say john so i have kept john in a capitalized letter in instead of just person i can use like a values so it's a true whenever i make let's say john one it will return a false because john one doesn't exist as a values but a john exist now let's say you want to make a copy of this original dictionary object so we can use like person dot copy so it will re uh, return a brand new object uh, which is having exact same values as a uh, original dictionary object has and it will create another dictionary object so i have just assigned to any particular variable so it has not returned anything but uh, on a console we found that age is equal to 23 and a name is equal to john now we have a total two elements are available inside this dictionary object now let's say you want to pop some element so let's say person dot pop and i'll just pop this age so 23 has been popped out now again if i try to print it so i have just the name john so 23 has been popped out uh, so it it has been removed from this per person dictionary object now let's say i want to add this one more keys to this person dictionary object so i'll just use like person bracket notation and inside that i'll just give the key so like a person each so let's give 28 same way let's give another one like a height let's say 160 centimeter okay now let's just print this person so now we have a total three keys age height and a name inside the person so this way you can add element inside the dictionary so this is all about uh, what is dictionary in a python so let's just summarize what we have learned so dictionaries you can consider as like a key value pair mechanism so if you want to store some value which is associated with some sort of keys you can use this dictionary so instead of referencing individual element with uh, just number like a 0 1 2 3 in case of dictionary you can reference individual element with the help of some proper structured name like a john so john won't be indexed uh, with a number 0 but in that case uh, this is indexed with a proper name like a name and this 23 has been proper name with the age you can do all those kind of matters like uh, you want to get uh, some particular keys or you want to iterate over all the keys or uh, values we have seen and we can find whether particular keys are exist inside this uh, object or not or dictionary object or not or particular value exist inside this dictionary object or not in the last we have seen how we can add a particular keys and associated value inside the original or dictionary object how we can insert the update particular dictionary object we can keep adding the element inside this dictionary object we have seen how to copy this original dictionary object and how to pop out some particular based on some particular key how we can pop out some values inside this dictionary object so that is all about the dictionary data type in a python i hope you enjoy listening this video and see you in the next video hi everyone let's discuss about uh, another two important data types available in a python like a tuples and a sets so we have already seen about the uh, list so if you have seen list the list is you can consider it like a non-homogeneous kind of element you can put it you can update the list you can append the list or you can add some element you can remove some element so tuple is exactly kind of list only 
The only difference between tuple and uh, list is the tuples are like uh, immutable in uh, nature. So you, in case of list, you can add element, you can update element or you can remove element. But in case of tuples, once the tuple has been defined, you just cannot modify it. So let's first create a simple tuples. So let's say one, two, three. I'll keep E. So I have created tuples having a total four element. So I need to keep this a simple typo. So it has written one, two, three, any. Let's just assign tuple. So now to create a tuple, you need to use such a kind of bracket notation. So small bracket notation. Okay. Let's just print this tuple. So one, two, three, any. Now let's say I want to append some element inside the tuple. So it will return me that there is no attribute like a append because such a kind of matter doesn't exist inside the tuple. So once the tuple has been defined, you just cannot add element, you cannot remove element. This is like a constant in nature. So that is called the immutability nature of this tuple. So immutability is nothing but you just cannot modify original tuples. Let's say another way we will uh, try to update it. So let's say the uh, zeroth element will try to update. Let's make it high. So now it says that this tuple object doesn't support this item assignment. So earlier there was no matter append is exist inside uh, you can apply on the top of this tuple kind of object. But uh, now it has saying that we are explicitly sending this zero element to high. Earlier it was a one. So tuple object doesn't support this item assignment. Let's say you want to grab the zero element. Same way all those matter what we have learned inside the list video. You can just happily use all those matter. So now zero element is one. Let's say the third. So third is a. So it's actually fourth index with a number. 3 or let's say you want to grab whether 2 exists inside the tuple or not so we can use like 2 in a tub so it has written true that means uh, the element having a value 2 exists inside this tuple let's say you want to uh, print all the values inside the tuple we can just simply use like a t in a and we can print like a t so one two three and a so there are total four elements inside this top let's say we want to grab uh, what are the total number of elements frequencies are there so one is occur one time two is occur one time three is occur one time and is also one time so still we can use like a top dot count Let's say we want to find how many total number of times this particular element A occur. So it occurs just the one time. So same count matter what we have learned inside this uh, list data type in a Python. And you want to find, let's say, the index of this particular A. So it is a 3. So A has been referenced with index 3. Same way, 3 you want to get. So it will be 2 because the 2 is pointing to this particular element having a value 3. So this is all about the tuples. Now let's see another data type like a sets. Let's say you want to put all those element without any kind of duplication. So in that case you need to use this set data type so let's say uh, i'll use this curly braces and i'll keep like a one 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 four times then two 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 and three let's say three and four so there are total four unique element but one is repeating four times then two is repeating somewhere three times three is repeating two times and four is repeating one time let's just uh, execute it and see so it is returned just the fourth element so set is kind of data type where you can put only those element without duplication so not even a single element will be 
duplicate it. You can put like let's say a and let's just assign it to the let's say set one. So now set one is just the five unique values are there. So because uh, it just contain all the unique values only. So one, two, three, four, and a. Let's say we want to grab what is the type of this set one. So now it's a type set. I have taken this set one because a set is already a defined keyword. So reserved keyword inside the Python. So you just cannot use all those reserved keyword as a identifier or as a variable inside this Python. Let's say you want to add one more element. So let's say I want to add let's say 56. So set one, let's just print it. So again 56 has been added because already 56 was not available. Now let's just add this 56 once again. And let's just print this set one. So still the output of this uh, set one is remaining same because as we already added this 56 earlier, this is like a duplicate case. So again we are trying to add this 56 and it has returned like a I cannot add this 56 again because it was already exist inside this set data type. You can use the remove like a, let's say I want to remove this 4. So now 4 has been removed. So 1, 2, 3, A and a 56 only remains inside this set 1. You can use like a clear to clear all the element inside this particular set. Apart from that you can use all those uh, mathematical operations like a union intersection you can use on the top of this set. So that is all about the set. So let's just summarize what we have learned in this uh, video. So we have started with our tuples. So tuples, the main idea behind the tuples is like a immutability. You just cannot change once you define this tuple. Then apart from that, all those methods you can apply what you applied on the top of list. And to define this tuple, you can use this kind of uh, notation or brackets to create the tuple. In the next, we have learned about the sets. So sets is like a unique list of element you want to put it into uh, some sort of collection in that case you can use this set so whenever you try to add a duplicate element inside the list or inside this particular set element uh, set data type you it won't just allow you to add that particular element so that is all about the tuple and the sets so in the last uh, couple of three videos around we have learned about the three important data types in a python like a uh, list dictionary sets and a tuple so now it's time to check our knowledge uh, whether you have really grasped the fundamental related to all this pure data types available in a python so for that i have kept some assignment problems and some exercise problem plus some quiz to test your knowledge so just go through that so that's all about this video see you into next video hi everyone so let's discuss about the functions and one of the very important concept in any programming language. So those of you who already know about the other programming language or they have other programming language background like a C, C++ or Java, they might know the concept behind the uh, function. But let me just give you the very gentle and a brief introduction what function is. So till now we have already used one very important function for printing output. So we have used this print function and as a part of the argument we have already supplied uh, some sort of string or any kind of number and it will immediately print the same number or the same string as a output. So what this function mean? So let's say let's try to understand the inner working of this print function. Okay. So let me just throw this function and its implementation as a one of the black box system. So, so let's say this is the place 
where the sprint function implementation has been written so and you give some sort of we can say input so let's say input hello world and output like print hello world on output uh, or you can say io okay so what happens that whenever you call this particular print function the number of uh, micro operations are going on at uh, each different operating system level so when you call this print function from the python python will eventually call to some sort of you can say system call uh, depending on different operating system that particular system call will be different and those system call eventually do some sort of more micro operation to pass on those particular input argument what we have supplied like a hello world to the output device so at a very high level uh, for you it's just uh, printing but uh, if you go to the minor detail level there are number of micro operations are happening and the functions are a good way of defining all those my micro operation and build it, bundle it into one particular you can say package and that particular package you can call it any number of times so when the next time you want to print something you just simply call this particular print function rather than uh, doing all those micro operation again and again so that is why the usefulness of this particular function related concept in uh, any programming language will come so you define all your task or you can say kind of micro operation and bundle it into one kind of function once those thing into bundle into one kind of function after that you can call it from anywhere throughout your application or anywhere throughout your uh, program and all those micro operation will be executed but you do not need to perform or you as a programmer or as a developer you need to write it so let's take example another uh, function let's say we have another function like add so it will just uh, do the addition it may be even more complex operation also and here i am just going to supply the two numbers let's say three and a seven the output i will get it like a 10. so here this add function will eventually implement the inner working you can say the addition operation it will uh, perform and it will give the output like a 10 so whenever you supply the new uh, input number it will do the arithmetic based on those particular number and it will give the output so the every single function has a input parameters it has a function body and it will return the output so some function may not return the output some function may return output some function may not return out and it will just execute and it will do its task so that is what the basic idea behind what the function is so you can correlate those function with a number of a real world system or you can say like any kind of even you can say mechanical system also so you can take any engine so all the task uh, needs to be performed by that particular engine has been defined inside that particular engine and we are just keep giving the instruction to that particular engine and engine will start executing our instruction based on what instruction we have supply and whatever the execution will happen after that we'll get some sort of output so let's say if you take example of any engine like a car engine so once you change the gear based on the changing of gear all those output effect will happen like a speeding change or you can say faster you can drive the torque will be applied more and a speed will be applied more sometimes or you can go to even a lower level gear and all those kind of operation has been defined inside the function of that particular car engine and as a driver or now in this case in a software engineering world as a developer you are just giving the instruction what needs to be performed okay so that is what the basic idea behind the function in the next video we'll see how to create the function how to create a custom function how you can supply as a argument uh, without argument how we can uh, create a function and we can try to return the 
any uh, string or a number or how will def uh, return the some value from the function so that's all about this video see you in the next video hi everyone so let's continue our discussion on a function so we have seen what is the basic idea behind the function what is the you can say the philosophy behind the function like do not repeat yourself that once you write the function keep calling those functions so write once and call many times now in this video we'll actually define the function with a number of different arguments without argument with return type without return type so what are the number of different variation we how we can create a function so the basic syntax behind the creating function in a python is with a def keyword so the first one is like a def is a keyword then you need to give like a function name after that bracket and inside the brackets you can uh, pass it like a what are the argument you want to supply if you don't want to supply any argument just keep it like a blank put the colon once you put the colon automatically indentation will come at a one level inside here you can write a body of the function and at the end you can write like a return function so what you want to return so let's say i want to return a temp variable so this is the basic syntax behind the function so let's define a one very simple function okay let's create a one function let's say it will just add numbers so let's say add let first uh, not passing any argument and we'll define here a one variable let's say where or i'll just give like a sum 3 plus 6 and i'm just going to return it okay so add function has been defined but we are not going to pass any argument so by default every time it will return the sum like a 9 okay let's just call this add function and you can see it has returned us output now let's say we want to give some sort of input argument so let's say the argument will be let's say a and i'm just going to add it here a so whatever the a i will supply it as argument it will just add 6 to it so let's say i'll just supply 10 it will return me as a 10 plus 6 60 so with added argument how it will behave so let me just execute it now let's say if i try to execute this particular part it will throw me the error why because it is expecting one positional argument and i am not supplying here any particular argument so that's why it has returned me the error now let's give let's say 10 and it has returned a 16 so whenever you define any particular input argument and you do not supply those argument as a while calling the function at that time it will immediately throw us the error but instead of that uh, you can just define some sort of let's say default value so let's say default value i'll just keep it like a 9 so 9 plus 6 is equal to uh, 15 and let me just run it now i am not going to supply any argument first and let's see what happens so now you can see without supplying any argument it has taken this particular argument as a default argument so 9 plus 6 become 15 and it has return us output so that is the one thing now let's get we want to give the two argument as input so we'll give like a b and i'm just going to supply here b so it will just do a plus b and whenever we do not supply any uh, a so in that case it will take this a is equal to 9 by default and it will return the the summation of the output okay so now you can see it has given us the another error like a non default argument follows a default argument so the second argument we haven't uh, given any particular you can say 
the default uh, value so let's just give the 4 okay so in both the case we have given some sort of default uh, argument so whenever we do not supply any input value at that time by default it will take a is equal to 9 and a b is equal to 4 so let me just execute so it has returned me 13 now let's say i want to give 3 and a 6 so it will return me a 9 instead of that let me just give a is equal to 3 only uh, so 3 as an input argument so the first argument it will take like a is equal to 3 and as i am not supplying the second argument b will automatically will be taken as a 4 so 3 plus 4 it should return a 7 so successfully it has written 7 now once you supply this argument the argument has to be in an order like let's say 1 and 2 so a will become a 1 and b become 2 now let's say you want to supply b is equal to let's say 1 and a is equal to 2 so you can just simply swap it so b will become a 1 and a will become 2 but instead of that you want to supply the first argument will be b and the second argument will be a so in that case you need to explicitly define the naming convention so let's say b is equal to let's say 5 and a is equal to let's say 4 or let's say 2 so it becomes 7 now the same thing without naming if you just supply it here in our case the summation won't make any difference so we want to realize it but if you just supply this way in that case your a will be 5 and a b will be 2 but uh, in this particular case as you have maintained the uh, order so a will be copied and b will be copied respectively 5 and 2 but in this case uh, we have explicitly telling the while calling this particular function that you should take uh, b is equal to 5 and a is equal to 2 so let me just execute it okay so these are the some of the ways you can define the function you can call the function how you can put the default argument how you can uh, give the argument while you're calling function in a particular order or you can give the argument while calling the function in some sort of default order okay so that is all about how to create your own uh, function in a python so that's all about this video see you into next video hi everyone so let's discuss about the lambda expression in a python so lambda you can consider it like a one liner function so we have already seen about the how to define a function and what the function is all about in a python so lambda you can say like a compressed version of a function if you want to write in a just one single line you can write it so before that let me just create a one very simple function and let's just try to optimize that particular function or convert those particular function into lambda expression so let me just create one function let's say def let's say i am going to define one function like a square one which is just going to do the squaring of input number and i can just define one variable let's say temp which will just do the multiplication of x with itself and return temp okay so this way we can define so it has taken almost three line we can even uh, concise it into two line also so rather than defining this uh, temp variable we can just simply uh, return this x into x so this way we can compress to three line to we can even compress to two line also so let me just define square two and this particular part only i'll just return it so from three line to we have reached two line but with lambda expression we can even reach to one line also so let's first define a square tree in a lambda expression way let's say square tree and this particular body of this function we will assign to the name square tree and this square tree will become a lambda expression so how to define a lambda expression so lambda expression will start with a one keyword like a lambda
after that it will accept our input argument so input argument let's take it like x then colon then you need to write what expression you need to return it so we want to return it x into x so you can see in a just one single line we have returned this lambda expression so after lambda you can write a input argument and then a colon and then whatever the expression you want to return it now let's say you want to give the input argument like x two argument so you can write like a x and y and here it will return x plus y or whatever the uh, expression you want to return it so let me just define for time being this square tree function and let's just call this square tree so it will exactly behave the similar way the other functions are behaving now let's say you want to see the type of uh, this square one and square tree because square one and square two is exactly similar let's say so square one is type of function but if you see square three it is also type of function so this is another way of writing function in a python which is a lambda expression way just a simple one liner function you can write whenever you want to return you don't have any big such a kind of processing at that time you can use such a kind of lambda expression so that's all about this video see you into next video